Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about all things TNA and who wore it best, Jay or Jimmy Uso. Just kidding. We talk about the Royal Rumble. What did you think we were going to talk about? Stick around! Hey, Mayhem fans, get 10% off all digital downloads from the RWA and IWC at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Use the coupon code on your checkout, Mayhem. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertise. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Royalist of all the Rumbles. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 404, Mayhem Not Found. Uh, I'm, of course, Sogatron here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. <laughs> As is most of the people here, because everybody was at the Royal Rumble. Making, making yeah. a statement, apparently, in the Royal Rumble. Uh, so, But we'll get into all of that uh, with me, of course, as usual, from his uh, dormitory... Dormitory, his deep dark dormitory. Um, where he... <laughs> Sorry, that didn't go the way I, I wanted it to go. Either way, it's Papa Lunchbox at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitter. How are you this week, sir? Hi. I saw it pretty great. I went and saw the Royal Rumble, and everyone can suck it because it was a really fun show. I want you to promise me that the title of this week's show will be Mayhem Not Found. Yes, yes, I, I, I decided that like this morning. Also, back with us this week because he had a very, very special brush with greatness. Uh, with one Stephanie McMahon that we're going to learn all about later on in the show. Matt Carlins, our friend in the mainstream media. How you doing, sir? Nothing but the best for you, Sorg. Look, I got out the good fur for you tonight. Look at this. <laughs> a thousand baby yeah. seals died for this. A thousand is so lovely. It's wow. negative seven degrees here in Pleasant Hills. And I'm freezing. Yeah, it's But I'm bad. okay. I'm in my basement. It's so cold. <laughs> also joining us. So, I'm so cold, Sorg. I'm so cold. It's pretty bad here too. It's pretty bad here too. I the, the, you want to see how cold it is? Like my legs are so cold. I'm doing like grand, grandma like blanket kind of stuff around my legs to help out, uh, so they're not literally freezing down here. Um, it's well, seven degrees in downtown Pittsburgh. Warm? What, what's that? What's that, Matt? The heat of those 500 computers you have in there can't keep you warm. Amazingly, <laughs> not. No, it's it's kind of a large okay. basement. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, nor, nor the furnace being right beside us uh, is not helping either. So, um, Also with us to join me in the cold is uh, Dutter is returning to the show. <laughs> There's a video uh -huh. for you. Um, somewhere underneath uh, uh, that scarf is Dutter's. No, no, apparently not. <laughs> I'm fogging up my glasses. <laughs> You're welcome, audio listeners. <laughs> ah, For those of you listening at home, I have a scarf wrapped around my face. <laughs> <laughs> Explanation. There you go. Uh, and you're also joined by by our signs from from uh, said event uh, uh, Sunday night, uh, as seen on TV. Yes, they're more ma way more famous than we are. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I can't believe somebody fucking did you buy Dutters a shirt, Sword? You buy Dutters a shirt because she got on TV. Yeah. Holding one of our signs. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> we made a bargain. <laughs> made a deal. You signed it in blood. <laughs> uh, in, in Twitter ease. In Twitter ease. And of course, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We like the just fans kicking back, getting together, talking some pro wrestling that we know and love. Uh, again, hey, thanks. Intro, uh, of course, by uh, Basic Sickness. Check out more of his stuff and download all those tracks at basicsickness.com for free. Um, you can also, ch also check out more about us, what, everything else is going on, including the wrap-ups, the after shows, the other shows, the Indie Mayhem Show, or Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com. You can also download us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Blip TV, Roku, on your Chromecast, all kinds of places. Um, you can also uh, drop us a line with good that times. great email address, but good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Um, you can also uh, drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. Uh, and let's say, look us up, uh, uh, give us comments on iTunes, give us comments on, on our uh, YouTube videos, all kinds of stuff. Let us know what you think of everything, your opinions on what we're talking about, opinions on what's going on in pro wrestling. Uh, continue conversation here after the show. And of course, you can join us here live uh, Tuesday nights at live.sorgatronmedia.com. 
dot com uh, about 9 p.m. Eastern time is when we usually get kicked off and uh, stick around with us through to the Indie Mayhem show at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, tonight's guest is going to be Gary J, who's joined us here on this show uh, previously. Uh, so we're going to get a, a good discussion with him here uh, recording later tonight. So um, also, hey, other friend of the Indie Mayhem show in the chat room, Kelly Kyle, who joins us uh, every week. Go check him out. I believe it's kellykylephoto.com friend of the show uh so let's get right into it the only way we know how with the fan mail and oh man do you guys have some reactions from the royal rumble this week um lb uh you got a note to yourself on this first one do you want to take this then sure sure and i do have a note to myself that'll come into play later to whom it may concern congratulations you are about to read the greatest email the mayhem show receives when i send it do my do me proud and carry on oh, gee. Dear Mayhem Show, so originally this was going to be a long, angry email that ended in charges against wrestling fans being brought upon the local Mayhemers that attended the Royal Rumble. I'm still not happy about the fact that there was booing 45 seconds into a match. However, I've changed my mind and I will not be pressing charges, even though you should have stopped it. First off, I was angry because the best match was the first match. I was angry because the rest was not all that great. Then I was angry because I was two eliminations from correctly guessing the Rumble. I sent a tweet last week that said the following, quote, I think CM Punk gets down to the last two in the Rumble. The authority interferes to help Batista win, end quote. So close, but alas, I was right on the victor, as was most everyone else. And that pissed me off the most. However, in the first 15 minutes of Raw last night, Trips made it all okay when he turned to the crowd and said, aw, is someone upset because they didn't get their way? And with that, the charges were dropped and I was less angry. However, I'm taking up enough of your precious time. Back to Sir William of Lunch for a dick and fart joke. Peace out, Chachi. <laughs> and my, my note says... Uh, note from past LB to future LB, see email from awesome dick and fart joke. So, uh, just bring that up here. Let's see here. Subject. What is that? Dick and fart joke to end Chachi's email. Okay. Uh, this isn't so much a joke, it's more of an observation. Why is it funny when you fart out your butt, but when you fart out your dick, it's all strange and you need to see a doctor <laughs> we'll skip that and address the email um uh yeah yeah we, i mean i think we all got a kick out of in the hangout when uh triple h was trolling everybody <laughs> last night mm -hmm. did, did that make it better to you guys to see that they're acknowledging this a little bit yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think they could undo all the damage done on Sunday night. I don't know if they undid all the damage in those first 15 minutes of Raw, but they tried. They came really close. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, it, it just it makes you wonder how deep the work goes. That that is what is in my head now. Is like how far is how oh going into the rumble that they were going to get a reaction like that. And, and the, you know, are all these pieces being put in place for us to just follow along? So the, while the crowd thinks they're rebelling, the crowd thinks they're screwing with the show, the crowd is actually doing exactly what they wanted you to do in the whole time. I don't know. Yeah, see, that I think that uh, that's, would be great if that was the case. Uh, and if they decide to, you know, we'll never know whether we're playing right into their hands or whether we affected things because it's wrestling. And nothing is actually for real or set in stone. It's all made up. It's I, listen. If it if it comes out where it's all a big conspiracy and it all hangs together, then I'll be pleasantly surprised. But I'm not holding my breath. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's toss over to uh, Dustin. Returns with another uh, one of his thought-provoking emails. I hope there's nothing about Japanese wrestling in it. Uh, dear Mayhem of fucking Americans. Americans. Thank you. Sorry. 
Uh, I just returned from a trip to Vegas with my wife. During the course of our weekend, my wife and I took my a few wife. hours to watch the Rumble in a sports room at Caesars Palace. Oh, uh, yeah. While the basket, ga- basket games were what dominated most of the screens on audio, once the Rumble match got going, you could see more and more of those professional gamblers moving away from their games to start watching the match on in the corner it was a very cool moment that i figured i'd share that's awesome mm-hmm. that's everybody the rumble awesome. gets everybody I, 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 mean, I wonder how many of those guys some action on the rumble i hear those betting lines are very intriguing <laughs> for the professional wrestling I say, yeah yeah for for something that's like a fi- a, a a fixed sport more or less right mm-hmm. um yeah. it's like it's like it's like betting on how dexter would end Exactly. Yeah, people will bet on anything. Anything. It's crazy. Uh, questions. Number one. Uh, there are there are uh, moments when a crowd can't add or take away from the match at hand. Uh, do you think the crowd in attendance and their chance might have taken anything away from the Cena Orton match uh, that those at home were watching? Uh, well, most of us attended. Uh, I did go back and watch the match, or at least sparingly, kind of in the background, just because I wanted to see what com- if, what commentary kind of did in response and everything like that. Uh, did, did anybody else go back and watch that portion of it in no. particular? No, no, nobody. No, no. Uh, so I, mean, I, I don't know if we can completely speak to it here, um, but but from what I saw, I don't know if it took away. I think it added a more interesting factor to it. Um, I think I think they did a good job of spinning it. Of of uh, okay, they did a job at spinning it, uh, saying uh, you know specifically like oh the fans in Pittsburgh are really getting into Randy Orton's head, you know that kind of stuff. Um, I, I I don't know. Can you guys think of anything else about where it was a big detraction? Have you ever seen a good match that the crowd just crapped on, that really pissed you off? I think that's the bigger question here. Not really. Like, yeah, I think I, I, I don't think it took away from the match. I think it actually added to it mm-hmm. because it made Randy Orton, you know, play with the crowd and do interesting things like that. That I really enjoyed. Because mm-hmm. if we would have been quiet, he wouldn't have paid us two bits of attention. No, because there were there were several times where you know we said certain things and he turned specifically. That was and just there was several points where he just stopped and mm-hmm. and, and yeah and looked at us and and it, and and it did feel like it did feel like. It does feel like we added to the match. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's one of the cool things about pro wrestling is that you can, the crowd can become part of the show. The crowd is part of the show mm-hmm. in the long run. And it's not just us going through the motions sometimes, you know, and it's great when they get a chance to react to something like that. Um, the, I, this kind of question came with like, you wonder, because they did the, um, the kind of reverse finishers at the end. Like, th- don't you kind of wonder if like, maybe that was a reaction to the reaction? Or, or was that part of the plan the whole, the whole time? No, I, I, I was thinking that same thing um, when they started going into WrestleMania mode. Yeah. Doing each other's finishers on each other. I'm like, I can't believe that that crowd... I mean, for me, the crowd only enhanced the match. The crowd only en- enhanced the whole experience because I never in my life thought I would ever be able to be in an arena with a crowd like that because I never thought I would ever get to see a wrestling show in a place like New York or Philadelphia or Chicago or somewhere like that. I figured I would have to travel to another part of the country to be part of a wrestling crowd like that. But I got to be part of one in Pittsburgh, Mm -hmm. which makes me suspicious as to exactly Hmm? on Sunday. Um, But for me, it was total enhancement of the entire event. It made it unforgettable. And uh, I want to say kudos for Randy Orton for at least trying to make something good out of mm-hmm. those terrible mm-hmm. things the audience was saying to him. They were <laughs> chanting, we want divas, Sorg. And we want yeah. divas did yeah. come off. We off. want divas. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think I heard a nastier, more vile <laughs> insult <laughs> chant from a crowd in my life than we want divas. My head, I, I can't, I'm still trying to process it. It's it's so brutal. I, I would have gone back. I don't know how long Cena and Orton cried in the back, but probably a good long cry. <laughs> Dennis, what did you think of that crowd reaction you got to partake in? 
<laughs> the crowd was so much fun. Uh, we had three MB chants. I don't know if uh, that, that was, was like kind of just small. Oh, yeah, was, the we had little sections of three uh, MB. Y two J. I don't think Y two J came off on no. TV from what I heard. No. Um, I, I heard the white two J. No, somebody did. Somebody because somebody asked me uh, if it was one of us that started it. <laughs> it seems like something we would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was at least enough to get him to do the Boston Crab, right? I mean, that's why they did the Boston Crab during the match, is because yeah. of the Y two J chant, right? Whatever possible reason would there be for them to pull out that move during that match? The Randy Savage one was ridiculous. Like, like there was no. I were they just because there were Randy they Savage chanted, people in the audience? You. They were just no, no. no. <laughs> they were just screwing with them. They were just screwing with them, and like, and this whole thing, we're like, we're like, well, they, we, the crowd was mad because they wanted Daniel Bryan. What, what did you think if you would if you're gonna chant enough that Daniel Bryan's gonna come out in the middle of the match and make it a three way right there on the spot? No, yeah. they just, the crowd was just determined to crap on poor. Randy Orton and that other guy. Although I, I, I do think, I do think, like they in the chanted, long run, you it, both suck. I, I, they I chanted, "This is awful." I mean, mm-hmm. the top two guys in the whole company. I, this is not. This is like. This is not Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, <laughs> where they were both leaving the company and the fans. It kind of felt like the fans were spiteful because they were leaving. It's not. I, I'm losing it trying to come up with another example. These are the top two guys in the company and the fans took a massive dump all over their match i i agree with you on everything except for the daniel bryan chance because the daniel bryan chance were persistent before the show during the show after the show i mean that is a statement of daniel bryan should be in this match right okay like i think that that is a legitimate the people want daniel bryan to be on top and they're letting them know it. Everything else was a, well, we can't chant Daniel Bryan all night, so let's try <laughs> this stuff. Um, and I think that's where that came from, that. And especially, and I'm sorry, and I think everybody everybody in Pittsburgh saw through the idea that this is the most important rematch ever. Yeah, bullshit. No, this is Brock Lesnar and, and hardcore Holly filler bullshit match in Royal yeah. Rumble. And, and, this is and, my, this and, you had, and we had just sat through... An awesome Daniel Bryan Bray Wyatt match. Mm-hmm. That we was just hard, watched man. an awesome Brock Lesnar beatdown. Yep. And believe me, that crowd loved Brock and they loved Heyman. Mm-hmm. And they had no problem watching him waste about six or seven steel chairs on Big Show. Yeah. And then John Cena and Randy Orton come to the ring. Randy Orton punched out Cena's dad. Okay. And John Cena leisurely comes down to the ring. Waits for them to do the introductions. The bell rings. They stroll up and they lock up. And it was over after that. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I do something, man. I think it was a little strong to say this. Uh, this is awful. Like a minute into the match, mm-hmm. like that's the only thing I disagreed with of the entire thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that that was kind of a, a dick move. The rest of it is like kind of a justified dick move. Um, I, I, from the chat, Amon says uh, Kofi Kingston ADR from last night uh, was a good match that they unjustly crapped on. I think I agree with that. I think I, I think oh, I yeah. definitely agree with that. Yeah, I agree. Um, there are there are specific guys that the crowd is targeting in general. Yeah, there there and 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 that last. Night on Raw was a good example too. They're targeting. There's a there's a section of the audience that is targeting specific wrestlers. They're targeting Orton. They're targeting Cena. They're targeting Del Rio. They're targeting Sheamus. I mean, this is not some pause. Dramatic pause. They'll come back. Uh, it makes me sad. That on specific guys, shoes. and they're telling WWE, "Look, do something. Do something." You know. <laughs> or at least tell these guys themselves. I mean, if you're one of those four guys, I mean, don't you have to take a look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I got to change something. I got to do something different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is- Definitely. Uh, and since he's pausing again, LB, what are you Sorry. saying? This started at like oh. <laughs> two WrestleManias ago. <laughs> and it's only getting worse. It makes me sad that Sheamus is and I love every getting minute. targeted. I was really happy that he came back. It was good to see him, you know what I mean? And and he came back, and was it going to be Goofy Sheamus? Was it going to be uh, Brutal Sheamus? You know, he didn't get the chance to say one way or the other. 
I was happy that he was back. I like Sheamus. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, for, uh, I think that's like all I got on that. Uh, question two. Sorry to have it. Number two, with the Rumble now in the books and one piece left, who did you think uh, makes it? Who do you think makes it to WrestleMania 30 to face Batista? Uh, I have called my shot of Batista versus Brock to headline Mania for the title. While I would personally like to see Brian headline if Punk had won the Rumble, I was calling for Brian to win the Chamber. I can see. Uh, I can also see Brock versus Batista in a match with a big fight feel to it. Perfect for the 30th anniversary. Um, I hope. Like I feel like that's the two big names to throw in there together, kind of deal. I feel like you're better justified by splitting those two off to have matches with two other current big people. Unless they count Brock kind of as, as a current big person since he's been around, sort of for mm. two years. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I kind of, like, you want Brian just, so is Brian. So I think Brian could maybe pull a good match out of Batista. Because it feels like after Rumble uh, Sunday night, he needs help. Right? Uh, he pulled what, a good match out of Cena before. And exact, exactly. Um, so, what, I don't know, what do you guys think? Who do you think? We, we know three people in the Rumble. Or I'm sorry, the Chamber. At, uh, in Brian, Batista, and um, uh, Cena. Um, you know, who else could they toss in there? I think Lesnar's going to get in there. Mm -hmm. I think it's very obvious Lesnar's going to get in there. Um, what, what do you think, uh, what do you see for the roadmap for that, for the title? It's hard to, it's, it's hard, hard, hard to predict because, I mean, we've seen the landscape change so many times between the Rumble and WrestleMania. I mean, we could end up having Batista versus Cena, you know what I mean? Yeah. He could just have his little bit of business with the Wyatts and then bounce right back. So I, I I would almost like to see Batista versus Cena. Why not? Cena was the guy who retired him or, or you know beat him in his last match or whatever. Yeah, well, fuck it. Let's make it happen. Okay, Matt, do you have something? Um, I I like Batista versus Rock. That's the one combination I've seen over the last two nights that's actually felt like it had a little bit of fan support behind it. I think if they decide to go with that, that fans would be excited. Actually, I think it would be a fun match. Well, you daughters. I, I just want to see cheer, fans cheer on uh, Lesnar if he pl faced Batista. I, mm -hmm. I could see that happening, and I could see um, it, that would be interesting to see. And I, and I think just to see them go head to head in, in the ring, I think because they haven't have they ever fought? They wrestled. I mean, I, I think they missed each other. I think Batista. I became think they were big after yeah. Lesnar left. So, so I mean, it's something we would never we haven't seen yet, which would be exciting, and we. Mm -hmm. I, you know, no, nothing to really predict as far as based upon past matches. And I think, like I said, to see them cheer on Lesnar would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and number three, his question, uh, I was discussing with Mad Mike the other day about the potential of Rude, uh, Bobby Rude, uh, claiming he deserved a title shot. At, oh, this is the wrong crowd to talk about this one. Uh, especially since he has basically been the reason that Magnus has been put out Styles and Sting. Uh, my question is would you enjoy a Rude versus Magnus program for the belt with both men heels, or would you prefer Rude uh, face turns since TNA is lacking the in the face department? Um, Absolutely, I would love I'll to see both of them Nobody wrestle as heel heels. versus heel. I would watch so. it all day long. Sword, <laughs> I agree. Matt, you're saying sorry, you guys. Heel over. versus heels, no good. No good. No, no. good. I don't know. I think I, I think I mean, it's I think gotta be the right Rude kind of heel, following, maybe, but though. Bobby Roode a... isn't that kind of a guy, I don't think. But we want to see they're, the shield they're and They're too Wyatt's. similar. They're, they're just like the same guy, basically. That's true. Rude and Magnus. That's don't true. you think? That's true. I I, I don't know. I, I could see them doing it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, and again, we're not. I, I think the the four of us here are not the regular TNA watchers. I just started watching a little bit <laughs> again. Turn thing on. What's that? I'm working on that. I'm getting to it. I'm on. getting to it. Things are happening. Things just are happening. Last time Thanks, happened, LB. You said to I see it behind me. The doing the thing. Don't worry. About it. We, we, there's a glitch that you're not even going to know about because you're watching this after the show, and I'm sure I completely fixed the entire thing. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, anyways, uh, just to finish it off, that's my time, fellas. We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. Uh, keep <laughs> on kicking ass because 2014 is going to be a great year for the Mayhem Nation. Regards, Dustin. And uh, I believe we have at least one more. Two more emails actually um, that hit, that came in here during oh, the last. There couple was of a there was a correction to Chachi's email. I forgot about that. There was a correction. What, what was the correction? 
in the first email, I wrote booing. What I meant was chanting, this is boring. I realized the mistake and knew I had to correct it or else face screaming that I was wrong. Peace. Awesome. Um, uh, LB, do you want to take Mad Mike's email here? Oh, I sure do. I sure do. I sure do, Sorg. I sure... Wait. <laughs> 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 Hold on, not in the dock. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Greetings, guys. <clears throat> it's that guy who still sees a way Brian can have that title one, who can't be on the show tonight because he's seeing Book of Mormon. It's Matt goddamn Mike. So, Batista won the Rumble, and that kind of sucks. But with all the tension between Brock, Big Dave, and Randy, I can still see Batista asking for his title match elimination chamber especially since Randy does not want to be in that chamber match. Brock cost Batista the belt, setting up Jimmy Johns versus Drax at Mania and leaving Brian to win the chamber match <laughs> for the number one contendership. Here's hoping. I won't leave you guys with a novel this week, but I do have a question for the panel. Who do you think the TNA mystery, mystery investor is? I kind of hope it's Jeff Jarrett, just so TNA can completely reset itself. Yeah. Just, just retcon TNA at this point. Uh, threw up a little. Oh, oh, and Sting and versus Taker is coming, you guys. Be ready. Why Alchemist ending transition? I think Mystery Investor is that midget who jerked off in the trash can back in the day. <laughs> oh, what do you guys think? I, who would you like to see the mystery like new investor for TNA be? Matt, you got anybody? He's thinking. To me? <laughs> yeah, he's thinking. Ted, Ted, Ted DiBiase Jr. <laughs> That's money. The top, he's going he's gonna to buy his own DiBiase posse, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Things to make LB throw up. Do you have any, any thoughts on that? is going to join the posse. <laughs> I'm going to go with Mark Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I'll, I'll one up you. I'm going to go with Mark points, Madden. Points. Oh, hey! Oh! <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Uh, <laughs> I got one more from Pierre Calais. Oh, oh, oh. Um, he had, uh, I oh, guess. I love this email. Riz was very excited about this email. Riz was very oh. excited about this email. All right, all right. He says he's very, he's very upset. He's very upset, guys. So oh, we'll, no, we'll, no. We'll, we'll air his. And I have every response to at least one of these many, many questions. I can't believe someone told me why Batista won. Royal Rumble besides Sheamus making a return to the event and had to mock Brian and dislike him. I don't understand that sentence. I mean, why did he return to the Rumble and mock somebody after the show? This is uncalled for. Did the writers have something in mind? And I think he just broke down English. Uh, yeah, and make the 40-something a winner? And how did Rey Mysterio become a bad guy in the Rumble? He's supposed to be a good guy. Did the fans not root for somebody who was good? Keep it to someone who cheers for good and vice versa. For What? For bad. I think he just told me how wrestling works. Roman Reigns is not the good guy, but the fans like him? Question mark. The WWE yep. Universe should quit cheering at bad guys, not good guys. I hope that next year's Royal Rumble will turn out for the better. Have a nice day, Pierre K, aka Mr. Techwood Drive. Well, yes. um, I think I think an interesting thing. First, I want to be very clear: Rey Mysterio did not get booed because he is Rey Mysterio. Ray Mysterio got booed because well, he's a. Whoa, 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 Jake the Snake Roberts, Chris Jericho, fucking anybody. Anybody. Yeah. If it was yeah. any of them, it would have softened the blow, but yeah. I think there still would have been Hulk a little Hogan. bit of, of response Hogan. to that. Would say Randy Hulk Hogan? Savage's yeah. ghost. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a very much a, you're not Daniel Bryan. Screw it. <laughs> Fuck you. I forgot what show I'm on. Um, <laughs> and, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. A lot of people are saying, you know, oh, they got upset. Well, Daniel Bryan wasn't advertised for the match. Well, fuck well, we, your we face. Gotta cover some other because points. the point of the Royal Rumble is surprises and excitement and people who aren't advertised for the fucking match. 
Mm -hmm. Suck my cock. Um, and, and as far as like Roman Reigns being cheered, I I, I don't know if you noticed for a while, but well, I mean, but LB, I mean, LB, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, Sork. It's okay. Go ahead, Matt. I I just wanted to. There's not a ton of precedent recently for a wrestler in another match on the card to show up in the Royal Rumble match itself. Double duty has not been a common occurrence in recent years, LB. That's true. No, I'm just making the argument against people who weren't advertised for the match. Whereas people who were advertised for the match didn't show up at all. So that's a double negative. There were people in the promo well, for the Rumble. There. <laughs> there were. They, I, yeah. look, I look back when I watch back. There were people in the promo for the Royal Rumble match from the beginning of the show that didn't make it to the Royal Rumble. Namely, yep. um, the primetime players. Primetime players, mm -hmm. Bad News Barrett, Xavier Woods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now boo booing Roman Reigns. No. Here's here's the problem. Uh, remember when Stone... Like, okay, memory box here. Get, get on your YouTubes. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin was not a good guy. Right? Right? Mm. We're on the same page here? He was not a good guy. Not a good guy. The people made him a good guy. Mm -hmm. The people started cheering him because he was badass and they appreciated him. The people started are starting to cheer Roman Reigns. The people are buying the shield t-shirts. I believe Bobby has a pink one. Um, people are, I, uh, uh, Matt, Matt, you, 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 your wife was telling Stephanie McMahon that the shield was your favorite, you know, uh, your kid's favorite uh, wrestlers, right? I mean, I, I, I could save that story for later. Yes, yes, just a little teaser there, a little teaser there. But, I mean, <laughs> the people, I think people are beyond the good and, good and bad, and people are on a mass scale that you're hearing the chance uh, appreciating uh, people that impress them. And R Roman Reigns is one of those people. I, I think really the fans impressive. got behind Roman Reigns at the end of the Rumble match because he was the lesser of three evils at <laughs> that point in their eyes. Yes. They were, they were booing Roman Reigns even toward the end of that. When it was down to the final three, I think the consensus among the crowd was, we hate these three guys. But by the time, you know, you know, once it gets down to Roman and Batista, and they're like, "Well, I think it's pretty clear who which one we want." I still think there's a um, good good portion of respect chance for Reigns, but I think that again, like you said, that put the rest that put every, all the commoners over in the camp as well, uh, <laughs> and that made it even more so a, a big deal. Um, I mean, uh, people don't like when people just walk in and get handed a belt. That's why we don't watch TNA, um, and we're not happy when it happens when Batista, with Batista and Brock Lesnar. And the Rock, as 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 regular wrestling fans, I think. Um, well, I'm, it, but I I think, and I feel kind of bad for Batista at this point too because, I mean, Batista's not here on one of those Brock Lesnar or Rock deals. He's mm -hmm. from everything that we've heard and read is is there for a solid stretch. He's going to be on the road. He's going to be doing every show, but unfortunately, fans see him. And are lumping him in with these other part-time guys. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. He has a lot. He has a long way to go before he's not a part-time or before he's not a rock. Before he's so, not a movie star returning. Is that Matt? Matt's frozen again. Matt. Matt. Might if you want frozen. to talk about feeling bad for Batista, oh man, when he won that match, differently. They did the like, nobody knew he was coming face. back until he what? looked so sad. He was just heartbroken. <laughs> He's like, but I came back, and everybody cheered when I came back. Why are you so angry? <laughs> Sorry, Matt, you were breaking up there a bit. What were you saying? Oh, the only thing I was saying is that um, don't you think if if the cat hadn't gone out of the bag, if nobody knew Batista was coming back until the Rumble itself, and if Batista came back as a surprise in the Rumble match itself, that things would have played out a lot different. Ooh. Yeah, true. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 all the promos are kind of like, "Hey, guess who's winning the Rumble for the last month?" Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, that's the feel, you know. Does he have any? I, I just on? want, oh. just want to say one other thing about the um, after the show. What what um, what was his name? Pierre. Yeah, Pierre Kelly mentioned in his email about Batista after the show, like mentioning that he might have been like mocking Daniel Bryan, you know, doing this, you know, and and I know there's. There was a bit with uh, one of those as he was walking back. 
I think that got a little bit blown out of proportion. I mean, I, Batista was being very playful with that. There was a, there was a fan along the who came up while Batista was trying to high five people and kind of just like flip Batista the bird. And Batista kind of gave him a smirk, turned around, and then just flipped him off back and emotioned like he was going to snap in half if he wanted to. And then he walks back to the underneath the Tron and he turns around and the fans are still, you know, chanting yes, yes, yes. So he, you know, he points his fingers in the air a couple times like that. And uh, I think, I, I think maybe what he was doing got a little bit distorted as like the word got around because it didn't air on the pay per view itself. No, um, but that whole thing was very harmless and playful on Batista's part. Yeah. I mean, the poor guy's getting killed. I feel I feel bad for him at this point. Yeah. If you look at a lot of the articles, it was Batista flipped off the crowd. And he didn't flip off the crowd. It yeah. was no. some idiot in the crowd who got, you know, was was an absolute idiot. And he deserved it. And I, he got points in my book for flipping the guy back off. Yeah, because, I mean, he's trying, he was, like, actually, like, finding the little kids that were like, yeah. yay, Batista, and high-fiving them at least. You know, mm -hmm. our kids were probably, like, confused as hell. They're like, this is awesome. What's going on here? You know, why am I the only fan? I'm your number one fan because I'm your only fan. And he found the one fan. Yeah. And then, you know, I mean, so he, the, kid, the guy was, like, flipping him off in front of a little kid. So, I mean, you know. Thankfully, it wasn't on TV. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, so Matt, you had a bit of uh, interesting brush uh, over the weekend. Uh, can you, can you tell us about this? Yeah, I'll tell you what happened, uh, Sorg. Um, as you and perhaps even one or two of your mayhem friends may realize, I, uh, I have a real job. I'm a, and he's the only I'm one a, of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a. Uh, I'm a TV news producer for KDK TV. Um, you know, as is normally the case in large office settings, I'm one of maybe two and a half people in a work staff of hundreds that actually knows anything about professional wrestling. Um, so, you know, obviously about a, as we were approaching the Royal Rumble, um, I still had a contact at WWE who I uh, paid whenever Bruno was getting his induction a year ago. And uh, after a little bit of prodding uh, from my wife, who I thank for encouraging no me to do this, um, <laughs> I dropped him a quick email. He's kind of said, you know, hey, is there going to be any media availability? Do you want to, um, you know, can you get us, you know, a wrestler or two to talk to here so we can put them on the news? You know, we can do a little coverage for, for the Rumble. Um, and uh, long story short, they served up for me to interview Stephanie McMahon. And uh, that is what happened in the afternoon. We um, we went in there with a KDK TV crew. We had uh, someone with a still camera. We had someone with a video camera. And uh, I went back there, and uh, Stephanie and I had ourselves a little chat for about 10 to 15 minutes. We talked about uh, the Rumble. We talked about the WWE Network. We talked about Bruno San Martino. Um, talked about a bunch of different things. Kind of talked about. Um, she gave some nice insight into kind of like what her routine is like, um, at least on a weekend of a major pay per view. Um, it was some good stuff. Um, I can't, uh oh, can't remember what exactly she told me. I don't want to be too evasive, but um, we do have this little thing coming up starting on Thursday. It's called ratings sweeps, if you will. It's kind of the hot you know, period where we folks in TV news, we like to really try instead of uh, <laughs> doing normal slacking off. <laughs> we'll be telling see, you this. this is kind of a trade secret. Anyway. See, as opposed um, to us podcasters, where we, we just don't try 24-7. Um, we got a we, we got some nice material. We got some good answers, good. interesting stuff from her. We're gonna see what we can do with it. We've got some material. We're gonna try to make something of it. Um, it's extremely exclusive. No other local station spoke with her. Nice. I don't know what other interviews she's been doing. I couldn't find her talking to anybody, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. um, the sense I get is that as she's taking over this uh, new role as the chief brand officer um, that part of that role may be her kind of being the the front person for WWE uh, when it comes to dealing with 
nosy reporters like myself. So whereas in the past we've got used to seeing Vince McMahon doing the sit down interviews with Costas and things like that, I get the sense as I sit and I kind of ponder how this whole thing played out that perhaps that the long term plan is that Stephanie will be that uh, out front face, that person that the networks are interviewing and that this is was kind of an opportunity to you know, do an interview with a local station and um, mm-hmm. kind of see how things goes. It was a it was a very positive experience. She was a very cool person. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure like any of you, I didn't know quite what to expect. I didn't know quite what to expect walking through the backstage area. But it was a very cool experience. Everyone back there was super cool to us, super professional. Stephanie was super professional. Um, the point person in their communications PR department who we dealt with could not have been nicer. The hospitality could not have been nicer. I mean, this is a traveling road show of like 300 plus people and everyone back there is just in constant motion and they all know exactly what they're doing. It was an impressive operation to see that up close. And, um, I don't know. I, I, you guys want to add ask me anything more about it. I mean, I'm happy to talk about it. I'm a little bit embarrassed at this point that it even happened. Wh- wh- but, um, where, it was a cool experience. What what you smell like? Yeah, that's what we've been pro that's what that, we've been promoting this that's this, this reason I'm here. Everybody has Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've been showing photos of course uh if you guys on video that uh, that your wife took actually of uh you yeah, and Stephanie. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Did you, uh, wait, you know, I, I got, you know, Sorgan, as you found out firsthand, my wife is very skilled with a skilled that. camera, <laughs> and uh, she was taking shots that we're probably going to uh, be sharing on the KDK.com website here as kind of awesome. part of our coverage here. We're going to probably like roll this stuff out over a period of like a uh, couple days or so, and um, I'm hoping that uh, everyone gets to see um, a big chunk of uh, the interview. Mm. Uh, even if it is uh, just on the website, and some of the highlights that uh, have a little broader appeal, we'll put on the uh, on the television. Okay, okay, okay. That's enough. Fl- that's, cool. Wait, wait, Matt, Matt, Matt. That's enough fluff. Let's question. get back to the major question. Here. TV news is okay. fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we put out the we put up the call because we wanted to find out from you the real dirt. What does Stephanie McMahon smell like? Now we have a lot. I, I want to throw out there. We have a lot of. It's a lot of guesses uh, <laughs> that that were, were up on Facebook. Uh, Charmin says lemonade. I'm not saying what Riz said. Um, uh, uh, Carr says success, the essence of Levesque, or Le- Levesque, or whatever we were saying earlier uh, before Levesque. the show. Um, smelled, smells like pure awesomeness. Oh, that was your wife, actually. Um, let's see what we got. <laughs> Orphan Tears was one. Uh, Lilacs, the tears of Brian Daniel fans. Daniel Bryan fans, sorry. Uh, so the, what is, what did Stephanie McMahon smell like? Power. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> I, I want to stress. <laughs> and I want to make this very clear. I want to make this very clear. And I don't care if the internet wrestling community excommunicates me for this. Stephanie McMahon was a very nice person. And I look forward to speaking with her again. Hopefully in the very near future. All right, so so we definitely. I have a question. No, no, no. I have okay. a question. <laughs> it's not. No, it's not a filth question. It's a real question. So you're you're talking about running this on Sweeps Week and everything like that, and um, it's an exclusive, and no other outlets are talking to her. Does that mean that you talk to her about more than just the Royal Rumble? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. We talked, about the, we, we talked about the Rumble because it's something that you know when you're doing like a story you know a report on the event day of you we did run some sound with stephanie on the day of the event itself on sunday during one of our newscasts and and it, it, it feels stupid for me to even be asking her but like you have to ask her like you know explain to the people who are watching who don't understand anything what the royal rumble is that those are the kinds of questions that you yeah. sometimes have to ask and that kind of earned a couple doing that just because in tv news that's in local tv news it's something you have to do yeah um but we did talk about the network at length the majority of the yeah. year probably and we 
covered some pretty good ground, I think. I think we got some good answers about a couple content questions that have been being bounced around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we talked about Bruno a little bit because that's of local interest. Um, and uh, yeah, just trying to hit where there are kind of a couple different questions here or there and try to get some different unique answers out of her. Um, she shares some pretty interesting stuff. Um, and, and I, I apologize. I, I, I would love to just spill all the beans right here, but I kind of have to keep it under wraps. For <laughs> oh, no, no. It's, 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 it's uh, sweeps week. You got the exclusive. And, and, and uh, you know, it's kind of a sweeps Carlos month, exclusive. LB. We, we go all month. We go all month. Ooh, shit. It's crazy. <laughs> awesome. Um, um, I've I, never been so interested in watching the news before. <laughs> Yeah, well, if, if there's ever a time for you to watch the news, uh, you should start on Thursday because that's when we start to try. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to miss it. That's amazing. I, I, I know you've always wondered what happens when the TV news people really crank it up um, Thursday. That's when you'll see. <laughs> um, no, no, you did. We did. We did allude to it a little bit earlier. So your wife actually got to talk to her too. She got to go back stage with you. Uh, I know. I know. She saw a lot of uh, people. She was uh, big fans of. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, that that experience uh, for her? Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was cool because after the interview was over, um, um, we were kind of milling around, and you know, it was it was. I mean, like I said, it was cool. She didn't. Stephanie did not. And the interview drop mic and run off she hung out and, and was chatting with us a little bit and uh you know as luck would have it um we have something in common in that we both have um an army of little rug rats you know she and what's his name have very kids and my wife and i have a couple boys and they're all around the same age so there was kind of really? an instant bond and <laughs> my wife and, uh, <laughs> started, to, uh, started, to trade, started to trade baby stories and um, Stephanie was very interested in the fact that our four year old watches WWE <laughs> and um, wanted to know who his favorite was and um, we had to explain to her that he's kind of on a rotation right now between uh, Punk Brian and The Shield and uh, once she heard The Shield she asked us, does he have a favorite member of the Shield? <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, he likes the same guy you like. Um, no, it's... Um, <laughs> um, yeah, he likes Roman, too. Who doesn't? Um, yeah, but very cool. The boys and that, the girls um, like him. We, we, we had something in common. It was... It was, it was um, yeah, it was cool. Hey, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a weird experience to kind of like... Um, you're, you're like, okay, you're standing there waiting for her to come down for the interview. Because we're kind of like, we're set up in the, um, in actually the backstage interview area, which the production people at WWE had like lit this backstage interview area for us. Um, the you, same one you saw, the, the Renee Young position, basically. And they had this thing all set up and lit for us. And we were just standing there waiting for um, Stephanie to come down and talk to us. And, um, you're kind of like in your brain you have like this like you're kind of amped up and you know trying to focus on what you have to do. um and it's just strange like once you meet the person face to face it's like all the illusion is gone it's just like oh you're just another person let's talk mm -hmm. awesome yeah. awesome uh cool Riz like wants that. to know if you asked her what vegetable she can be i understand if that's the sweeps question that you're not allowed to talk damn about. it <laughs> damn it ah <laughs> oh. You know, I, <laughs> I got about an hour's worth of questions that I want to ask her now. <laughs> well, next time, hey, they're coming Already? back in June. And that was before I had what kind of vegetable would you want to be? Somebody had told me hey, that, um, that somebody was talking to me about the interview today at the station. And he asked me, did you ask her how Shane is? And I was like, Damn it! <laughs> um, it, I mean, I think any of you, if you're in my position, and they come to you and you're like, "Okay, Sorg, good news, Sorg, I've got ten to fifteen minutes for you to talk to Stephanie McMahon. Now, what do you two want to do at that time? What are you going to ask her, Sorg? You know, that's how do you smell so good? 
What do you smell like? Why do you smell like? Why do you smell like ginger ale and aggressively sweaty feet? <laughs> Stop it! Stop! We're spoiling his story. Uh, and, and also, on a side note, uh, you're spoiling my story. You're spoiling my chance to get another one. So. <laughs> Oh, Char Charmin also says if he's ever elected office, he wants you as his as his hype guy. Me as his hype guy. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> the, the art of the tease is something we uh, that is taught in college when you're uh, coming into the TV news. It's like teasing 101. Um, I'm sorry to do this to you, Sword. Really, I, I would love to tell you everything, but I got to keep it under wraps. Understandable, understandable. On that point, let's cap that then. Uh, so look at that. KDKA News. Will it, uh, for those that are not in Pittsburgh, will this uh, be online as well? Yeah. Um, keep your keep your antenna up to KDKA.com. And if you follow me on Twitter, at Matt Carlins, I swear to holy Jesus, anything we put up on our website, I will tweet out. Please. So that all of you can take part and look at what a terrible interviewer I am. No, I, I, <laughs> oh, it can't be any worse. I'm not going to oversell this, but um, I don't want to over. It's the greatest thing of all time, but it was um, it, it was a it, it was a very interesting um, little chat. It was exclusive, and I'm not seeing anybody else talking to her, so I was. Very uh, excited that we got a chance to do it. Awesome. Very, very cool. All right, guys, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back with Remember When. We're going to talk a bit more about our Rubble experience, I believe, and uh, bring in the rest of the Yahoos to talk about that and hopefully get a perspective from people that weren't there. I think we'll have one lone person that wasn't there with us to tell us how wrong we are about how it was on TV. Um, but in the meantime, let's take a look. A couple weeks ago, uh, Sorry, Tron Media and the crew, uh, we all went down to West Newton for the big RWA fifth anniversary show, Uprising 6. WWE, former WCW star, the sign guy, Lodi, the champ down there, taking on Best in Pittsburgh, Ashton Amherst. A lot of great stuff, a lot of great matches. Of course, we talked, uh, uh, you know, uh, a friend of the show, Jason Gorey and G-Raver. Uh, great coming out party there. A lot of returns for that group. Here's a video uh, for you guys on the video. And others, some great basic sickness music for the rest of you. Uh, we'll be right back. And check it out, circuitronmedia.com slash store. We'll be right back. Let's remember when. You like and you forget this. I don't know what to say. But you got one minute to decide to walk in the state. Slim is the margin of error. And you won't be able to look yourself in the mirror. Fight for that edge. No matter how far I come, I know I still got a step to take. Quit, pull that sick. Yeah, I do what I have to to get where I got to. Eat dirt, that's sick. I recall worse, but better, so what can you do to me? Fight for that edge. Hey guys, welcome back again. Check that out, uh, RWA Uprising 6 over there on uh, sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Everything else going on with RWA at rwalive.com. They got a big show actually happening. Uh, if you're in the area down by California University, south here of Pittsburgh, uh, big tribute to the troops event in April. Uh, so again, RWA, RWA, blah, blah, blah. Cool down here, rwalive.com <laughs> for all the information on that. Oh, uh, we've opened the floodgates to the Mayhem Nation. They're all here uh, for this week's edition of Remember When? When and again, when is then? This week on Remember When, I want to, you guys, you're going to have to wheel it back, just dust off the fog, all the way back to last Sunday at the Royal Rumble. Um, I, I figured, because the mass. Because the mass. I'm, like I'm like Dory from Finding Nemo. <laughs> Short term memory loss. Um, because, because, I mean, the majority of us here, I mean, the signs are right there still behind behind Dutter's there. Uh, from, the from sign. The At Mayhem show. The now, the now as seen on TV signs. Hi, Riz. Hi, Riz. <laughs> Hi, <Dutter. laughs> um, so there are, the, so I, I, I think a lot of us, uh, all but maybe two of us in here, I think we're, we're in attendance. Uh, and even the ones that didn't, I mean, it's a Royal Rumble. You had to have a favorite moment from it, um, from, from watching it. Uh, so we, we, she's still battling with the signs over there. But it's, no, no. That's half of my sign. Oh, here, here, here. There you go. Bobby. Bobby. 
Bobby, there's Bobby. only one of you, so this is going to be kind of hard Bobby, to, yes, to Bobby pull no. off here. Um, <laughs> Asa is okay, but we'll get here, into that. I'll vote on your moments. So, so <laughs> vote, yes, she'll let us you know if your moment is good, yes or no, or if it's a Bobby, <laughs> or if it's a Bobby, <laughs> or if it's a Riz. That's very disappointing. Or if it's Bobby. a Devin Devinson. <laughs> Um, but no, what was your favorite moment here, live or, or watching, uh, of the, uh, Royal Rumble? Who wants to go first? I'll go. No, let's not so, all go There's once. so many <laughs> of you. I'll go. I was being uh, nice. Besides the fact that this was the Rumble, and during my drive back to, um, my house, I was contemplating that I was actually at the Rumble, and it wasn't just a, um, fever, know, dream? a fever dream that I had. <laughs> and then I realized Bobby was in my car. Yeah, and then you, and and then you ran into this tunnel. <laughs> but butt hurts for some reason. What? What? We are what? Talking about but that. also... Um, <laughs> Hold up the no <laughs> sign. <laughs> right there. No! No! <laughs> so I, I remember hearing the... Um, the Los Matadors uh, theme play. And I'm like, okay, those two, are, uh, uh, one of these guys are going to come out and oh, yeah, I was do something. Like, oh. And then I turned to I turned to Bobby, and I go, how cool would it be if El Torito's in this, and not the other? <laughs> guy? And then I look over to the entrance and I see they're preparing to bring out El Torito. Yep. It was confusing. And he enters the rumble. It was confusing <laughs> at first because you're like, fancy. wait a minute, are both of them going in? Like, are they that yeah, indistinguishable? Fancily dressed El Torito, too. Yeah. Well, they actually did, they <laughs> had part. that, like, the top screen or whatever that, like, said whose name was going to be in there or whatever. Mm -hmm. We didn't see the top the, screen. Top, whatever, the fucking. We were, at the, main, we were at the thing. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the thing going we're stop. The screen was there, man. I, I hate to break it to you. It was, yeah. We were counting and in the. I, I hate to say this worse than anybody else, but Eamon is right. No, <laughs> he's not. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, no, he's not. He's horrible. That doesn't, that doesn't differ. Those okay. are two opposite oh, things. I can be horrible and right. <laughs> So grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Could I go next? Right. Yeah, Bobby, what, right. what was your moment? <laughs> my, my moment came about the middle of the Rumble. Uh, Antonio Cesar was doing the giant swing on Seth Rollins. Oh, God. <laughs> and we were up to about 20 when the countdown started for the next wrestler to come out. And we're like, yeah. what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what to do. <laughs> 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 Uh, that was great. <laughs> awesome. What about you, LB? Um, there were so many great moments. <laughs> I I really enjoyed um, after Kane got eliminated when he snuck back in. Um, oh he God! Came in through the crowd, job. jumped over the barrier, <laughs> and I don't know if somebody was grabbing onto him or if he got caught, but he was like ripping and tugging at the barrier. <laughs> Before he went, like, got loose and went around and, and hit on the other side. And uh, there was a uh, What's Kane Doing chant. <laughs> there was. I forgot about and that. That. <laughs> that, made me, that made me happy. There's actually, it was really weird because um, Kane actually, I guess, from what I understand, I guess he came in early and it was a miscue. And he, he actually just hid for, like, <laughs> half of the rumble in the front. Yeah, he did. Like, and it was can't. weird. Mm -hmm. Well, huh? you can't hide a guy that's as big as Kane. <laughs> you know, everybody on <laughs> our side saw him, so we're just like, what is happening down there, you the know? black pants, it just blended yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> it was just like, why is a shirtless businessman <laughs> naked in front oh, of the it. Royal Rumble I ring? I love Kane coming out in the suit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, uh, what about, uh, who's next? How about you, Matt? Oh, uh, got to single me out. Um, <laughs> I got him. This is too obvious, but I got to go with it only because I felt like I had like a perfect vantage point to watch when uh, Kofi Kingston did his near elimination. Oh, because yeah. just from, from sitting in the spot where we were, almost near where the hard camera was, you could actually see how great the distance was between the barricade and the ring. And the first thought that went through my mind when I saw this was, he's never making that. 
mm-hmm. like legitimately not believing that he could make it. And um, I, I like the reaction of the crowd. It's like the whole crowd just kind of rooting for him to do it. Come on, you can do it. In, can I ask also, in turn with that, was I and the people I was watching the Rumble with the only ones yelling, push him to the fans? No. That were <laughs> oh. no. I, I was I afraid of that. Thought that was no, I happen. was really hoping that he wouldn't. Mm. <laughs> I, that I honestly nice. thought that was going to happen. Dick move. I do remember, uh, I think it was Armageddon, when Jeff Hardy did something like that in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And some guy just went up and tripped his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and it, like, he, he jumped on the barricade, did his little running thing, and you can see somebody's hand just come across and just wipe him out. Also, and I'm oh, sorry, but that's worth that's, that that's worth being ejected. Like, legitimately. <laughs> like, you just changed history, bro. <laughs> I took Jeff Hardy out. Wow. Uh, Dutters, what about you? What was your favorite moment of the night? I think it was oh. during the, you know, the pre-show uh, when I got to see, um, you know, badass Billy Gunn again. Mm. And I wanted to point at all the fans and go, I've been a bigger, I've been a fan of this, of these guys since before you were born. Because most <laughs> of the group, we were, there was a fair amount of crowd around us that was probably like, you know, 14 and under. And it made me feel very old. And But actually, it was so weird because I had seen them years ago in Cleveland, you know, in, in the late 90s. And just be... Just wording these words again you know all these years later and sit, being able to relive that it was like this is crazy <laughs> but that that was definitely one of the more fun parts i think me. i got I, I got a that was probably one of my favorite moments too is is like because I, I i never i don't think i ever got to attend a match mm-hmm. with them on it you know other than like you know yeah. seeing, seeing billy gun up in the area and stuff like kind of individually and stuff later on maybe but so I never got to do the whole ladies and gentlemen, boys ladies and, girls. and gentlemen thing, <laughs> yes. you know. And, and that was that was a great experience, you know. And, and and you know, even like as opposed to like an indie show versus versus something like this in 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 the full WWE thing. Well, did you notice that whenever they said "suck it," nobody motioned? It was just "suck it." <laughs> I was like, no, that's true. You that's true. No, do I did the hand- see a guy during the Rumble just, or actually probably during the Randy Orton match, stand up like close to the ring and start doing suck it yeah, motions. Yeah. But I think that was another reason. <laughs> that was for a different That was for a whole different reason. Um, <laughs> Randy Orton. No, I think that was the highlight moment for me. Yeah. But again, it, it for me, it was a lot of fan airships. Of course, this, you know, best seats I've ever had for, for a live event. Uh, and, and obviously, as, as evidenced by the couch, we went uh, kind of crazy with the signs. Uh, <laughs> and we see, and I, I haven't put them out there. Actually, uh, Matt, your, your wife got a great your wife got, got a great, <laughs> got a great right, so pick of, of us uh, 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 past CM Punk when he was coming in. I thought it was TV at first. I'm like, oh, my God, that's a good shot. But I realized it was a camera, but, but still it was a fantastic shot. Um, and, and we actually I found must, a bunch. You just must have been all over pay-per-view. Um, I can't you know, imagine no, that, like, you, would, I'm you surpri- were just on there with that sign all night. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 from what I watched, if you look at some, I figure the only chance you have, um, because even like we could see during the the pre-show, like did a wider shot of the the tag team mm-hmm. match, right? And we're like right at the top of the thing. So only if you you see a wide shot of the ring, you'll see us right at the top. But again, we're in that red light, and mostly the most, we had the at Mayhem show sign up for first two or three matches. Missy just held it like just on our lap. You know, because I figured, well, if the shot's up here, maybe we'll get in here. We don't. It's not very readable. I don't. I, from the shots that I got, I don't think it was very. We readable. learned a lot about sign making. We, yes, we learned a lot about it was, sign making. It was like making. a little camp. Bold letters. Yes. Bold, yes. Bold, letters bold letters. White paper. I think a couple of the signs were a little too wordy. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the more to the point. No but, fat heads. You got to bring a fat head. To yeah, we didn't bring any show. fat heads. I mean, <laughs> and we would have been right on if we had a big Ben Roethlisberger fat head. I know, or the uh. clown that was behind him. Um, that clown was Frank creepy. the Clown out yeah. of it. <laughs> it was. He has really a was. name. So is he legitimately Frank the Clown? Or that, that was Frank the Clown. Yeah, we, we saw him afterwards, and we didn't we think saw it was him. him. After it was him. the show. It was really him. It was awkward. It was mm. awkward. Because <laughs> he was yep. still in makeup. Yep. Still looked like a clown. Just a dude. I love the gimmick. Just a clown, just a dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> clown isn't a gimmick. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> I think I'm college. Clown <laughs> <laughs> college. Um, right. 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 
Are we oh, still um, doing remember when, or are we on the round table? Now? I no, I think we have, have a couple. Anymore. Who's left? I can't even remember anymore. Hey. I, haven't, I haven't said one. Okay, go for one. it. You weren't there. <laughs> I wasn't there, but I have stuff that <laughs> I like. Here's what you think. Oh. No, go ahead. Uh, oh, no sweet. surprise to anyone. My favorite Rumble moment was the debut of Alexander Russo because I love that guy so much. I love him so much, and and I was sit, was sitting and watching the Rumble with people that haven't watched NXT before, and they loved him immediately. So, yeah, I, the minute I, he threw I, a spin, oh, the, the minute best. he threw a the minute he threw a spinning wheel kick, that <laughs> said it. And, and I think the crowd Another was completely moment. behind him. Go ahead. Another good moment for that match was the stare down between Jack Swagger and Rusev. Mm-hmm. Yes. And everybody started chanting USA. For- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's America. laughs> That's amazing. Um, yes, I'm still here. Yes, you're still here. <laughs> of course. Did, did we There's a lot of love for um, the real Americans in Pittsburgh, and I recall there being a lot of love last time for the Raw, and, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, and then, and then, They're uh, amazing uh, no, no. People hey, love them. This is great, universal. So. I'm sure that's exactly why Pittsburgh loves the real Americans, because they're such amazing wrestlers. I'm going to keep telling myself that. But you're seeing that. I, I think you're legitimately seeing that. But like the Roman Reigns discussion we had earlier, where I think people just up appreciate the wrestlers and, yeah. and the gimmick is entertaining yeah uh by the way with that uh yeah can we get to the point where it's like we stop grouping these people as like this is a face and this is a heel like can we just have people with motivations and like and like doing what they're doing and we are the like world can we just have <laughs> look past the color of their gimmick <laughs> 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 and, and in theory, I would think you should boo the real Americans because, yeah, you kind of shouldn't be cheering for, you know, xenophobia. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, they're amazing wrestlers, and Roman Reigns is an amazing wrestler. And should it matter, like, this, like, dividing line that we put people on all the time, you know? So you're, you're the polar opposite of what I think Pierre Kelly's email said. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. You it shouldn't matter if someone's a face and someone's a heel. Let's just have people, because like the Shield and the Wyatts are feuding, and both of them are heels, and it's okay. Like they have motivations, I, and I I disagree to ex- extent. I mean, sure, like the, pick your you side, need, but like, like like the the kids that is based that they're basing this stuff on, the the kids they're trying to get hooked on this stuff. They don't know who to cheer for. <laughs> and they if they, for, they just somebody cheer for the- cheering for, you know, the real Americans who are doing stuff for, you know, send you all an opinion in the back <laughs> there where they came from. That's that's cheering for something weird. Is it not? No, because they're just not cheering I think they're cheering it for different yes, they, reasons. Yes, they're cheering the, the, the kid. The, 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 the. Yeah, we like it because of the rest, <laughs> right? Right. Riz, Riz, do you want to tell yes. the story about the little kid behind us? About the Randy <laughs> Savage kid? Yeah. Oh, I've heard this story. Oh. There was a little kid behind us. Okay. Go ahead, Bobby. There was a little kid behind us. He. Everybody was chanting Randy Savage. Okay. And this little kid, like, everybody stopped chanting Randy Savage after a while. But this little kid behind us kept chanting, Randy's Savage. <laughs> like, he was saying, Randy's Aww. Savage, while Randy Orton was in the ring. And we just, like, both laughed. Because this, <laughs> we're think- like, this, this little kid doesn't know who the Macho Man is. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but then, then we realized we're old. Yeah, we're old. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. I think, pretty I think funny, people more you think of that than... in any case with kids. When I was a kid and watching wrestling, I cheered for the wrestlers that my dad thought, that my dad liked. Mm-hmm. That's just what happened. Fine. But and it's more, fine. The more you but... get, the more turned away you get from that aspect of heels and faces. You're gonna have molds, and you're gonna be molded differently. Like, and and being molded as a kid helps you as you go on. Right. It might. And then, it's it, it's to the point where you have to be. When you're a kid, you have to know who to cheer for and who to boo because the 
good. There's a good side and there's a bad side. So what's the good side or bad side with the shield and the Wyatts? I don't know. We're gonna find exactly. out. We're so gonna let's find choose out. the side yeah, that you like the most. I, I think the shield would be the good side of that one, right? Because I mean, the shield. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because I, I think, I think, and we've seen the this shield before. isn't like run by a uh, psychopath. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, people can have the same motivations, well, uh, but depend. Wait, the people can have the same motivations, <laughs> but who they're pitted against changes the tone of that and the interpretation of that. Um, it should, I will say it should change the tone. It shouldn't change the motivation. No, no. I mean, you can be in a situation, the good guy, as in you're the better, you're the one that people want to support and where that motivation fits versus the other guy. Um, right. CM Punk keeps saying best in the world. And even though, I mean, you can kind of say in certain points, he never really turned heel or face. He's kind of always the same guy. Mm. Who he's against and how he reacts to that person changed whether he was a good guy or a bad guy. To some degrees. I do think, though, that, like, for example, when you make that shift or whatever happens, there's a lot of cases where the wrestler will just change who the, their alliance is and forget all their past history and just be like, I'm on this side now. Yeah. Therefore, I have to like everyone that's on this side. That yeah, like the that uh, when Rey Mysterio I, returned, flip flop either time. side, and, and then like high five CM whatsoever. Punk, mm-hmm. and they had to forget about all the sh- history they went through. Yeah, yeah, because they were on a side. Yeah, and I don't think you have to be limited to that side. I think you should like people. You should like certain people and not like certain people, and shouldn't change the side you're on. Mm-hmm. Like Ring of Honor. <laughs> no, not like or, or TNA cross the line. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but you know, execute. Yeah. What mm-hmm. happened? Who's, did, did, did everybody give a thing? Everybody did everybody really remember? We didn't really finish remember when, but it, I'm did, sorry. Did, did anybody not remember yet? Sorg, did you I remember? Didn't. Will Will's didn't yet. Will's. Will's. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure, forget the black guy. See how it is. I, I well, you've just been over hey, there. You fucking asked me. Wheels, <laughs> Wheels, we love you. For, <laughs> about Kofi, I love you, LB. Wheels, we love uh, you for your gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> Wheels, I was surprised that you jumped that far. Oh, uh, tell me about it. Uh, well, I was one of those ones who wasn't in attendance. I got to watch it at California University with with a bunch of students and stuff and yeah in the theater right yes yes That's, that had it been awesome it, it was a lot of fun i mean there weren't a lot of kids there but that's because most of them were down in pittsburgh <laughs> so but a few of us that did watch it i mean the most fun i had was just the reaction of all these other people mm-hmm. of like the nxt guy they're like who in the hell is that guy i'm like <laughs> oh he's from nxt they're like What's NXT? <laughs> Did you say, well, you'll know soon? <laughs> I was like, it, you'll see it on WWE. It's on network. the network. <laughs> and and I, one of my favorite moments was watching just Roman Reigns and Batista just stare down each other. And it was just like, that is a future match that everybody will like. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> after, after Modern reaction, Pittsburgh. I was going to say, after that reaction from Pittsburgh, I mean, I don't know. If someone can it's... learn some cardio. Mm. Good point. <laughs> Look at you, Roman oh, oh. And another, And another wonderful thing, <laughs> wonderful thing I enjoyed was, my God, Kane has apps. Yes. Yeah. 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 After taking the uh, executive job, he did take up P90X. <laughs> P90X, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that is the best I think I've seen yeah. Kane in a long mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. So he, speaking great. of that, um, did anyone see the uh, sign in the crowd like near like the first three rows that said DDP yogurt? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 No. And, and to which the discussion <laughs> was, if he made it, I would buy it. Uh-huh. I regret it. Change the Joker. Oh, hey, I you know what? Uh, oh, fuck. A lot of you guys were there in person. I saw a lot of really good signs, mm-hmm. not including ours. Ours are the best. Ours were the best. <laughs> uh, 
Was there yeah. anything you guys saw, uh, the guys in person, that you know you probably wouldn't have seen on TV necessarily, uh, that really stuck out? I, I, you know, I, those experience. I mean, we kind of touched on a couple of them with your remember when, but I, I think this is the fun part of the live show, and especially as bonkers as people were for this being a Royal Rumble. Kane stealthy I'm... ninja action. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I saw a man's penis in the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> well, I wouldn't have seen that on television. It wouldn't have been on television. Yeah, well, hey, wait, wait. You know, actually, I I, I hate to diverge so quickly off of this, saw. but that reminds me of the selfie that Gregory Irons took in Cleveland last night in the bathroom. <laughs> that was a little weird. It was a little weird. I didn't actually see a man's penis in the bathroom. I just thought it was a good joke. I would what? never have been in the bathroom <laughs> at console. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Any other signs? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Back to signs. Sorry, Away from sign. penises, Sorry, please. <laughs> Anybody I saw look one at of the, the signs, signs really. when I was watching. I, I, th and there, I, there was a guy um, who was who was on your side of the arena, Sorg, mm -hmm. uh, much lower, almost exactly along the aisle where uh, the Shield were walking in, and he had a, a wide variety of signs. And, but the one that stands out is, like, as Collins was coming down to make his entrance, he's got a sign that says, like, Seth, there is no urinal underneath the ring or something along the Yeah, line. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Did you guys hear about that, why that is? Yeah. Because he was being interviewed recently, I forget where, and he admitted to peeing under the ring during a match. Yeah. I heard about what? that. What? So that's what that was about. I, I saw. I, yeah. I I didn't see that okay. a night of, but I saw that on <laughs> on, on on video right. when we watched it. Yeah. Huh. So I, that's something. I'm gonna to change think about. it up for you. Okay. Zeb Coulter signs. <laughs> yeah. I have no fucking clue what they yeah. said. The like, one said one every ninety said. second an illegal immigrant enters the the country. <laughs> oh, that was that, that was one of my favorite. And then there was another one <laughs> that was. You you could time it yourself, but they took your watch. <laughs> they was wow. underlined in and, and red letters. Huh. I'm like, oh my wow! It's uh, <laughs> you're speechless. He's he's he was the MVP last night besides us <laughs> or Sunday <laughs> besides, besides us. us. <laughs> We're the best. Best crowd We're ever. Really awesome. Oh, we that, were in the Hall of Fame. Now that we got everybody, everybody together, we, we talked a little bit earlier about that crowd reaction. Um, I, I want to get the, the rest of you, uh, your thoughts on that. Do you, like, I, I, I think, you know, there was an interesting mix of factors, I think, last that night. Uh, being, mm -hmm. we did get stiff for what, Survivor Series. We haven't had a pay-per-view since Civic Arena, I Thanks believe. And, you know, to have the big, the second biggest pay-per-view of the year, um, you know, I, I think that added so much to the energy. You won't get a crowd like this at SmackDown, I don't think. Mm -mm. No. Because no. people, people traveled yeah. in. We didn't just have Pittsburgh. Mm -mm. We, people, we, saw play, we saw New York license plates. People traveled that for this like they do WrestleMania. There was a guy from New York we were given a hard time for, and he actually gave us a hard time back for, about Sidney Crosby <laughs> outside of the <laughs> arena. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. yeah. Like, and screw, we screw saw that a guy. guy dressed up as Vader. Mm -hmm. uh, he clearly he came for <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Was the Vader guy hairy, and was he with somebody dressed as Jim Cornette? No. No. He was I'm very skinny I don't know. Okay. So there was two Vader guys. Okay, because there was a Vader guy Vader. that was at WrestleMania and WrestleCon, but we also saw him at Night of the Superstars in in uh, Meadville. Actually, the Cornet actually did a promo thing that's on YouTube with uh, Dabrowski. Uh, I don't think it was him though, because no. it was skinny. No, it, How it many people would want to dress like Vader in the long run? At least because it's Vader time. Vader. Okay. Every 90 oh, wow. seconds, Vader time. <laughs> I actually, actually time them, I loved you in Boy Meets World. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're my favorite actor. I love Vader. Awesome. Um, but no, what did you guys think uh, from your perspectives um, as far as as far as how, that crowd last night? Um, I was watching with a group of people, and the consensus was we all love the Pittsburgh crowd. Mm -hmm. um, especially during the WWE Championship match, um, I think 
especially during that match, I think a lot of shit got misconstrued as, well, like, where the – this is the internet, like, Mark people – like shitting on John Cena and Randy Orton or whatever. Um, objectively, that was a terrible match. It was a horrible match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were real and they had it was, right The most interesting much. part was when they started stealing each other's finishers, and we cheered for that. Mm-hmm. Which was the worst part. <laughs> that was the okay. most paint-by-numbers bullshit yeah. I've seen. Like, it's Thanks, literally bro. just paint-by-numbers. Mm-hmm. And it was lazy, and, and it was – it took everyone out of it. Yeah, but it was, I had, pe- it was I had still people the watching the show with me that had been following the WWE for a good while, and their response was the match was terrible. Mm-hmm. I think they screwed themselves by putting those other matches first. We were so hyped up after those first couple matches that we were just, mm-hmm. and then it was just like, bleh, so almost slow motion we were, watching this. I mean, I think It people, was like torturous. It, we were, because it went, everybody was into New Age Outlaws, yeah. Gold Dust, Cody, like, it was... Like I think some one of the, some of the biggest pops were for the pre-show, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. a rarity. Yeah. I mean that 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 match you know definitely belonged on the card. Um, but again, you know, I think room. it was a matter of timing, and I think it was a matter of you know you know in the Rumble you have such few matches, so yeah. obviously, obviously. Mm-hmm. the WWE Championship match would go that late in the mm-hmm. card. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you can necessarily blame them and, for that. And, and also the Brian Wyatt one got a lot of time. Amazing. A yeah. lot yeah. of yeah. time. And, and, and it did so well in that match. I was like sitting there, I'm like, I was enjoying it. I'm like, wow, this is really good between these two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This was a you know, really... Even the, even the Lesnar show wasn't that bad. I like Lesnar show. I like the fact that it was short. Mm-hmm. It had to be mm-hmm. short. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah. I think it, they didn't need to have a 20-minute match. It, it, it really worked. And, and, and the point. It, it did what, what they, they did. set out, what they wanted it to do, mm-hmm. which was get Brock Lesnar over as a monster again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in that five minutes, Lesnar could not stop sweating. <laughs> could not yeah. stop sweating. And like, he didn't know why his hands caused that much pain yeah. <laughs> to the match. Even better, which is something wing. you only sort of get live, but you really get when they hammer it home. The part he's beating the big the shit out of the big show with the chair, and there's a part where the camera is just on Lesnar. He drops the chair, and out of nowhere, you see a chair fly in, and he catches it. And <laughs> <laughs> to just fucking wail on it, and it's the about, most hilarious moment ever. And I'm sure the live crowd, in the live crowd, you can obviously see Paul Heyman throw it to him, mm-hmm. but they don't show Heyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah it but even in a live crowd, you're not paying attention to Heyman, no. so it's still a surprise. You're like, it's oh, the most look comedic, at that! Like, look at the chair. How about Lil Nate on the outside amazing. catching the chair? And plus, and plus, yeah, Lil Nate catching. He was he was the MVP <laughs> of the night. Um, oh yeah, we saw. We got, I caught that too. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it, it, and the thing is that the way the match started, it was so sudden. I think it caught a lot of the crowd by shock. Especially well, I missed the beginning. Like, I think we were, lo- I think we were drawing numbers for the Rumble match, and we missed like the beginning sequence, mm-hmm. so we didn't realize the match had started. Yeah, which it didn't. Right, it, it didn't. We the, didn't start until we ran in with that punch. Because they started. And, I, and I, there was a lot of conversation of did they ring the bell? Didn't they ring the bell? Yeah, yeah. yeah same here. Same here. Same here. But can I, we go back? I know it. We it was before this, but can we talk about how good that Daniel Bryan Bray Wyatt match is? Yeah, I think, I think it was defining as to, um, Bray Wyatt. Um, mm-hmm. This was going to be, I think, a real test for him to show people like, hey, I can also wrestle pretty well. Mm-hmm. I forget who who on the panel said it, but they said those two are going to be big names. In the future, mm-hmm. I, don't uh, know I think it was, was Shawn Michaels either. actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was HBK. I think he said. I think he said like you know the future. If the future of the Looks WWE right, is yeah. in their hands, then it's in good hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and JBL on commentary also mentioned like I think after the Lesnar match, they were sort of recapping and there and JBL <laughs> mentioned about like so I think the line was somebody better call the cops because those two just stole the show. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I did. actually heard that. I'm what, like, what wow, else that was awesome. That, what, what else would have stole the show? I mean, the world title match that we saw five million mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. It's the greatest rematch to ever happen, ever, Riz. You know this. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, I know, I know they're, they're, I mean, WWE are masters on making you give, give a crap just about Just say, something. like, this is a rematch. Like, yeah. just, no one cares. Like, just, 
It's just villain is what it is. Like, it should have been better to be like, this is John Cena's last chance to prove himself or something like that, rather than that. Except for when he's in the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, yeah. Or something else. Not, it just, they picked the wrong buzzwords. Uh, It's not even even the hype that killed that match. You know, oh, it's the biggest rematch ever. That didn't actually matter. If those two had gone out and put on a really good match, People wouldn't shit on it. People would have been yeah, on board yeah. if they had really gone out and put on a good match. Mm-hmm. But they didn't. You can make people entertained. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, if that match were a television show, my DVR wouldn't record it because it was a repeat. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up, Bobby. Yes. All right. Uh, Bobby, yes. Um. All right, guys. I want to start this now just because I know it's probably going to take the next 20 minutes to do this. But please tell me what you learned this week. Wait uh, a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a goddamn minute. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Something happened at the Royal Rumble that uh, I need to discuss here. Okay. Oh. I won. Oh! Yeah. oh yeah. You got bragging Once rights. again, I won the Royal Rumble poll with Batista. And I just want to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you better apologize. You better apologize to me. I had the worst picks. No, I don't, no Eamon had El Torito. Me, me and Eamon were tied this year. Eamon did. Um, I no, did. Eamon, Eamon had El Torito. It's it's. Who it's, else did he have? Did no I, really, I didn't even know I had picks. I'm sorry, I didn't pay attention to the Mayhem one this year. I <laughs> <laughs> You've learned. That's because nobody. I didn't look up. I want to know what my picks. Yeah, were actually, now. you had El um, Torito. I I had Jack Swagger, which was okay. I had the Great Khali, which was not okay. <laughs> yes, and, it was. And the worst Uso. <laughs> <laughs> the I had, Uso, I had you know which one that is. Other Uso, Gold Dust, and uh, somebody else from a tag team. Um, uh, who's twenty five? Crap, I can't remember now. Was it Samara? Oh, was it Rowan? Oh yeah, it was Rowan. That's right. Because I had twenty five right. in mind, so it was yeah. It yeah, was yeah. So uh, like, Bobby, I also Roman reminded Reigns. Bobby after he said that that the show at the uh, party that I was at that was watching it. One of my friends got both Usos and R Truth. <laughs> oh. oh, okay, he, he went. Oh. <laughs> who who yeah. had Roman Reigns? I feel sick now. Yeah, who did and, have Roman Reigns? What number was? What, what number was Reigns? Uh, like 18, I think, or 17. Let me go check. You guys continue talking. Well, I got to come in. Uh, you guys keep talking. The winner of our like party poll got both Batista and Roman Reigns, which oh, is geez. sort of sad. Oh wow. <laughs> All right, let me look here. Pull. Hey, also, who what number said, do you say he was? I think he was 17 or 18. Also, who said Seth Rollins could come through the crowd and the other two could come through this backstage area? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was, Rollins. Seth Rollins was, nice Rollins was number yeah. two, so he had time to get through the crowd. <laughs> I had 90 Rollins seconds. <laughs> True. Where's that True. list? You know, fun fact, when I was uh, watching a few past Rumbles, there was a Rumble where... The Sandman was in the Rumble, and um, he was had some like number fifteen, number sixteen, and Sandman came through the crowd. So no excuses, Shield. Mm. Just no one throw that out there. Spoiler alert: Don't ever uh, symbolize with the Sandman ever, <laughs> ever. <No. laughs> His name is Hack. <laughs> His name is Hack. Hardcore Hack. All right, now can we talk about what I we learned? Know. I can't find the I can't find the list, but uh, yeah, whoever whoever got to Roman Reigns, if I could trade places with you, I would have. <laughs> well, LB, what'd you learn? Uh, oh, just, uh, <clears throat> I learned that uh, if given the opportunity, uh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy doing the. Come back to me. Okay, what about you, Wheels? What did I learn? Okay, this is going to be a funny one in connection with the WWE Network. What I learned is <laughs> we watched a pay-per-view via WWE.com, and it kept having to be restarted Ooh. so many times. Ooh. And I went, and the first thing I said was, if this is how the network's going to be. I know a lot of... A lot of yeah. people are going to get it. Well, you know, I actually have a test for that I want to do with WrestleMania where I do, you know, have the WWE Network feed, and I also want to have a 
otherwise procured feed and just kind of see what holds up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like... I, I mean, I don't know if it was the school's internet that was doing it, but... No, I, don't I have heard it was the whole feed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Better work it out, guys. Well, and yeah. also, also, I want to... Uh, probably, whatever they're using now is yeah, not what they're be going different. to be using, because they're probably right. not on that MLB AM yeah, system yet. that's what I'm thinking, too. So... I think that's probably part of it, too. Oh, and side note, Eamon had Roman Reigns. Oh, oh I did. Good job. That makes so sense. So I take Eamon, back I the title. If I, if I could have given you the win, I would have. I take back Thank the title either. of Horse Rumble entrance. I would take that win. What about you, Bobby? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I learned. Yes. <laughs> that you were I thought yes was the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting worried there. I, I, I learned. Bobby! I learned, I learned that uh, if you don't agree with Ric Flair, he yells at you and gets very cranky. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we we another thing that happened that was funny. Um, Ric Flair uh, picked Batista to win the Rumble. Everybody booed, and he just like turned up to the crowd and was yelled at us. <laughs> he says, yeah, "Learn to amazing. love it." <laughs> it was great. I fig I figured out what my thing is. All right, go ahead. Lunchbox. Uh, what you I learned that when not doing the Legends panel, but still having to stay out there to film the next segment, Shawn Michaels just sits and shoots selfies on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was watching Shawn Michaels the entire time, and his, he couldn't touch the floor with his feet, <laughs> so he just feet were dangled dangling. his feet back and forth like a little kid swinging his feet around. I'm like, he's Shawn Michaels, he's pretending he's a kid. Because he's the heartbreak kid. He, he lives the gimmick, right? <laughs> is, is that what you learned? Uh, no, I learned that it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if you have Andre the Giants rotting – or a zombified Andre the Giants come out in the 30th man – as a 30th man, <laughs> he will still get booed out of the fucking building. Oh, Ray. I've never seen anybody booed out of the building in WWE that hard. Poor Ray. It's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, WWE. Pittsburgh. I did. I did. did. Anybody else just feel bad for Ray Mysterio yeah. as much as we maybe yeah. don't really like him right now? Uh, you know, you know, it, it got blown out of proportion because it made seem like it was just – the uh, Royal Rumble where we yelled, at, where we booed at Rey Mysterio, <laughs> but during the um, the pro, those little side promos that they did, mm -hmm. you know how it, the one-liners that they have, yeah, with the little boxes. Mm -hmm. Never knows they booed the hell out of Rey Mysterio there too. That's they did. True. Yeah. That just made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> it made it worse because they know. Oh, I feel sorry for him. I, I actually yeah. forgot he was in the Rumble until like the end. It was, it's like it's gonna be Cena. Cena's gonna come out, and, yeah. and that's and then the thing we all we all forgot, and then yep. they got really. Well, that's really the thing we all rem at when we were watching it live. We all remembered. Yeah. And once Biggie Langston came out as twenty nine, we we're like, shit, it's Mysterio. Yeah, because I remember like five away. Like I did the math. Like okay, mm -hmm. we haven't seen him. Him. He was in a promo. He was in a promo. It's like oh, and then I actually said, what about Biggie Langston? And then he came out. I'm like. Fuck, there's no Daniel Bryan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is going to be yeah, bad. Me, me and Sarah were having the chat. Ooh, who could it be? It could be. She really wanted Chris Jericho yep. to come out. Yeah. So more than anything. Yeah. She's I was like, like, Jericho. And I was like, oh, maybe it could be this guy. And, and then yeah, she's was, like, wait a minute. Ray Mysterio. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was like, it could be one. That's why you got so upset with her. I was what? like, you started yelling at you. Oh, no, you didn't. Never mind. <laughs> what? Wait, what? What? Was, what's happening? That was in my little uh, dream there. I had. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? Did you? Oh, my. But I was like, Ray it could Riz be one of them. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Lunchbox. I didn't mean anything. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what's going on? Oh, my. But I think Riz is trying to hide something. All right. Um. Somebody, uh, Matt, what did you learn? <laughs> so many people, Somebody. fuck. Somebody learned something. Well, thank you, Sorg. Um, I learned that it doesn't matter how many questions they let you ask Stephanie at the fan, <laughs> you will only want to ask more. Yes. <laughs> That's all. That's true. That's true. What about you, uh, Eamon? 
Uh, I learned from wrestling this weekend. I learned from the Royal Rumble that nothing is cooler than uh, watching the Rumble with. And I sort of mentioned this before: watching the Rumble with people, uh, a couple people who like haven't followed WWE in years because they, I, they really don't enjoy it. Like they, they were like, uh, it was just boring stuff or whatever. They sort of kept to some of the indies and stuff like that. But them finally like watching it and realizing, holy shit, this Bray Wyatt guy's awesome holy shit, Roman Reigns is amazing, and like just sort of like falling in love with it again. Like nothing's sort of cooler than that. I think we're living in a peak era for uh, professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. I hope so. Excellent. Dutters! Hi! Oh. Oh. Mine, uh, well, mine's different than everybody else's. That's good. <laughs> There's a lot. I went to my first Ring of Honor show, and I learned oh, yeah. I liked it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's my first yeah, non-professional event. Fresh. I don't know. I don't have a favorite yet. I haven't gotten to know him. Uh, uh, Steen was at uh, Steen. I swear, Steen was at Royal Rumble. I saw him and I pointed him out. <coughs> Missy that's said, "No, that's not him." And then he tweeted that he was there, I and I said, "Yeah, he was there." Oh, there you go. But yeah, no. Why that was do my I first... have a fur coat on? Your fur coat. That's a ridiculous <laughs> question. Go away. What? <laughs> What's happening over there? Uh, is that, is that your yeah. wife? I'll sit down here it's and try. My wife. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Tell, that tell her that we've been <laughs> tell her we've been wa- talking about her all night. Here, put on the headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. And those don't know, Jen Hello. actually has been Hi, joining us in the Facebook uh, group lately for Wrestling Mayhem Show, mm-hmm. and it's been a blast. It was good to meet you there uh, mm-hmm. uh, the other night. Yes, it was good to meet you guys too. D- is there anything you want to say about your br- your your brush with uh, Stephanie McMahon? Um, that you're allowed to say. <laughs> I was just down to earth. She was. Mm-hmm. Tell us Matt's deepest secret. <laughs> deepest darkest Matt's secret. Deepest secret. Deepest darkest secret. <laughs> Tell us one thing we that don't know my... about him. <laughs> <laughs> I like this now. Uh, this is uh, good. This is good. No, maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the Facebook. Just tell us. Just tell us yeah. boxers or briefs. <laughs> How did you hear that? Uh, I'm, just tell us boxers or briefs. Both? I'm writing a fan. Both? Both? Both at the same time. <laughs> don't don't bring no. up fan fiction again. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I killed Lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Oh, no. oh my god. Oh, Bobby, no. no. Bobby, no. Get, get in the car. There you go. Bobby, get in the car. No. No. Wow. Get in the car. Um, I learned I learned that Pizza Milano is the best place to go before wrestling shows yeah. again. Yeah, um, that's great. Because I, I will, like, twi- three times we heard the Cena song. Twice, it. <laughs> Everybody booed. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> um, we we heard the, the Batista theme. Cena, Cena, Cena. Yeah, we, that started in the bar slash restaurant. It was it was pretty fantastic. Um, a great time there with our, our little uh, pre show meetup we did with everybody. Um, so sadly, there wasn't a lot of seats, but I think we cycled through nicely. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, sword <laughs> punched me in the face. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That time yeah, I learned that I punched Bobby in the face. And yep. it didn't hurt my hand. Bobby got touched a lot. I'm soft. <laughs> yeah. Monday. I'm soft like a pillow. It was very, it was very loving. Very loving. Um, Shriner, ja- er, Shriner jacket plus sword punching him in the face. Uh, something yep. else, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm better than you all because I have a Shriner's jacket that is imported from Maine. I don't understand. Any made of from this. Shriner's jacket. Guys, oh, thank you on. very much. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> Dutters, for joining us here in person. Bobby, Riz. Four. Uh, yeah. LB, Wheels, Matt, yeah. Eamon, oh. uh, from all over the place, but mostly here in Pittsburgh. Jeez, <laughs> um, uh, I don't even know where to go from this. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, awesome time this weekend. Awesome time getting everybody together. One of those rare times uh, and everything. Thank you, all of you. Uh, let us you know your thoughts on Rumble, anything else, in the usual places on Twitter at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, at Mayhem Show on Twitter, of course, on the Facebook group that we mentioned before. A lot of awesome conversation there. Uh, you can also find us on a page on Facebook. You can find us on Google+. Plus, uh, and we're also on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. Give us comments on anywhere you're listening to us or share it so more people can check us 
it's out and we can make that conversation even bigger. There's like 10 people joining the group every week. It's, it's tremendous these days over there. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, good times at WrestlingNameShow.com yeah. is the email address. 412208. Uh, I'm sorry, 206 WMS0. Uh, and also, hey, big thanks to Michael Allen's been joining us for, for months now. He, he's been uh, doing uh, tweets during the live show so you guys know what's going on out there in Twitterland. And also doing uh, the show notes for us, uh, helping us keep us uh, kind of in tune here uh, with everything. So huge thanks to Mike Allen. Everybody say thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. And with that, okay. thank you. To, uh, stick around if you're live for the thanks, Indie Mike. Mayhem Show or check it out on the site. Uh, our guest is going to be Gary J. Mayhem out. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the